Hey guys, it's Logan. Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over auto tiling with objects. Now, you can follow this tutorial whether working with GameMaker 1.x or GameMaker Studio 2. Just follow the code. The interface might be different if you're using a previous version, but it's no big deal. The code's going to work the same. So, what we are going to be creating is actually, uh, like I said, auto tiling, and I'm going to show you some basic uh, how it can be used for ground destruction, terrain destruction. So you could see uh, I can destroy the terrain and it kind of reconfigures uh, itself. Now I don't have enough images for all of the transitions like this uh, one block that's isolated out here, but by the end of this you'll know how to program, uh, you'll know enough about it to be able to do that yourself. All right, so how do we get started? First, we need to import our tile set as sprites, and each tile is going to be an individual frame or an individual image index. So let's go create our sprite. If you don't have a tile set to use, you can download it in the link in the description, uh, the tile set that I'm using right now. So let's name it S ground. S ground. Uh, let's do edit image. We're going to import it as a strip. So we go up to image at the top import strip image and then for my tiles they are 64 by 64 per tile that's the size uh, yours could be different just whatever size you're using for your tiles enter frame width and height here and then i have a three by three grid of tiles so i'm going to enter number of frames three by three is nine frames and there's three frames per row one two three so i'm going to hit three and enter and it looks like it's going to cut well. I hit convert, and now we have these separate frames. Now, we're going to reorder these frames a little bit. The way I found easiest to do it is having these frames uh, cycling in counterclockwise uh, fashion. So what I mean by that is you have the top left up here, and then you have the top middle, and then you have the top right. And next, I want the uh, right middle. So the right middle would be this one right here. See, it has the right edge. And you go from here and then down to the right middle and then you go to the bottom right. So I'm going to move the bottom right over. Then I want the bottom middle next and then the bottom left and then the middle left, which is already there, and then very last, the middle middle. So you can see it goes in a counterclockwise uh, order. Each tile is a counterclockwise rotation, basically, of the previous. Okay, so let's hit escape, that's all we need to do there. Now we have our S ground, so let's make our object, create O ground, and assign our sprite to it, and then add a create event. And in here we're gonna execute a script that we're about to make, it's gonna be called SCR underscore auto tile. Braces. Okay, so let's make our script create and let's name our script scr underscore auto tile. Now if you go back up, your color should be changed and you're good to go. So I'm gonna maximize this. Um, it's gonna look super cool, be jealous previous Game Maker users. Uh, go get the new version, it's awesome. So I maximized it, it's in a different workspace, one of those Game Maker Studio 2 things. All right, so what do we need to do in order for this tiling to happen? Well, for each block, we already know in the create event, we're gonna be running this code. So what what do we wanna do when the object's created? Well, we want it to check to its left. Is this your left or is this your left? Whichever one's your left. To its left, to its right, uh, above itself and below itself. Now you could make this more advanced and check diagonals and things like that in order to uh, change what tile you want to use but you'll be able to program that yourself after you see how this is done. So the first thing we're going to do is get our tile size and I'm just gonna name it BS, capital, I'm gonna use all capitals, you'll see why, equals um, sprite width. So this is gonna get the width of our uh, sprite or our tile, our tiles basically. You can use any number if this doesn't work for you then uh, just use the size of your tile. You kind of have to use the size of your tile. Okay, and now we're going to name short. Uh, we're going to be typing these quite a few times, so it's going to be abbreviations. I'm going to go ahead and label this. Uh, we're going to name this 
base size, <laughs> base size. And then now we're gonna have uh, four different variables. Is there a wall above us, wall below us, wall to our left, wall to our right? Let's see. So wall left, wall right equals position meeting x plus bs y, and we'll get pass in o ground because that's what we're checking for. So position meeting returns a boolean. It's gonna return true or false of whether this meeting happened or not. So we're checking, uh, in this case, 64 pixels to our right. Is there an object of ground type there? If so, this is gonna return true. And now our WR is going to be equal to true. And now we're gonna do this for wall left equals, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste position meeting and I'm gonna use minus for uh, the X value. So we're checking to our left. Is there a wall to our left? I'm gonna copy both of these with control C and I'm gonna paste uh, then below it, and we're gonna have wall up and wall down as our last two variables. And wall up, we're gonna be checking directly above us. So that's gonna be Y minus BS on our X coordinate. And finally, wall below us is gonna be Y plus BS on our same X coordinate. So now we have the positions laid out. Now let's do uh, a ton of if statements to check what's true and what's not true. So first we, remember, we're gonna start at image index equals zero being our top left, right? And then it goes uh, top middle, that's image index one, top right is image index two, and so on and so forth. So how do we get our uh, image to be set to our top left? Well, if there's not a wall, so we do not wall to our left, if there's not a wall to our left, and there is not a wall above us, so wall up, if not wall up and and like I said I'm using all capitals so that we can hold down shift during this you can hold shift the entire time you're typing all of this besides the if else okay so if there's a wall to our if there's not a wall to our left not a wall above us but there is a wall below us so wall down and wall to the right parentheses then we're gonna execute this code image index equals Zero, that's simple. And we're gonna do that several times until we cover all the images we need. So we do if, now we're getting the top middle, there's a wall to the right and a wall to the left. And there's not a wall above us. Actually, yeah, and there's not a wall above us. So wall up, not wall up. And there's a wall below us. So wall down, then image index equals one. Uh, this needs to be else if actually. Go back up if you're not finished typing it. It needs to be else if. And we're gonna run another else if below it. Now we're checking for the top right. So how do we get that? If there's a wall to the left and a wall down and a not a wall to the right and not a wall above us, so up then image index equals two. Remember, because our images are going counterclockwise, it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's gonna be really neat, tidy like that. So let's do another else if, and this time we're doing the middle right, the right to the middle. So we're doing if not wall right, basically if there's not a wall to its right, and there is a wall to its left, and there is a wall up, and there is a wall down. Then image index equals three. Else if we're checking for bottom right, there's a wall up and a wall left and not a wall right and not a wall down. Then we set it to image index equals four. Else if, now we're in the bottom middle, There's a so there needs to be a wall left and a wall right and a wall up and not a wall down. Then image index equals five. Let's keep going with this bottom left now. Else if, there's a not a wall left and 
not a wall down and a wall up we're almost done and a wall right image index equals six else if now we're on the left middle so there's not a wall left and not a wall middle left right okay so there's a wall left right wait there's not a wall left there's a wall up and a wall down and a wall right image index equals seven finally our middle piece so there's a wall all the way around it so we do wall left and wall right and wall down and wall up image then we set our image index to eight because that's the final image and for good measure uh, below the sprite width up here at the top I'll let you all type this out three two one under the sprite width let's set our image speed to zero so we don't have our uh, sprite animating on us all right and that's it now we should be able to go to our room and let's paint in it so I went to the room now I'm clicking the ground I'm just gonna paint some blocks um, some block pieces here and let's do this cool good enough and we hit play I always get errors somehow let's see no errors today and you see everything auto tiled we didn't have to do any of this so one more thing that we could do with this since they're objects is we can destroy them and have it retile so let's see how to do that I'm going to go back to uh, my ground object so we have uh, auto tile set in create now let's be able to destroy the object by clicking on it so let's use mouse left pressed event and call instance destroy now before we destroy this instance let's grab a some information about it so we need to see all the objects around it so when it gets destroyed it can say hey objects around me um, you need to retile you need to call the auto tile function again to change yourself so we need to grab all the objects around it so we're gonna do that by using um, let me see exactly how it's done okay by using instance place so there's a, a few different ways to check for collisions of objects instance place returns uh, if a collision happens, it returns the ID of that particular object. So before we destroy our instance, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna save all the instances around it and variables, and we're gonna use an array to make this uh, simple, not simple but easier to write. So let's create an array. Let's call it inst. Uh, there's gonna be four. There's gonna be one to the left, one to the right, one above. So we'll have inst zero, inst one, inst two inst three and equal signs on all of them good to go and now we're going to use the instance place remember this grabs the id if an instance exists at the position we're checking so we're going to check to the right so it's x plus bs we're going to check on this y coordinate against o ground o ground is what we're checking for if o ground is not found at this position it returns no one so this object uh this variable would be set to no one we're going to do this four more times now we're going to check to the left place x minus bs y o grounds now we're going to check above instance place x y minus bs uh, against o grounds go down instance place and we're going to check below us x y plus bs against o ground and now we have four variables set to either an id or no one and one check we're going to do before this is actually uh just in so we don't come to any errors if this is the final uh, i guess we wouldn't come into errors would we because these would just return no one yep we don't have to do that I was thinking uh, sometimes if you destroy an object and then you check for that object, it'll return an error. This instance doesn't exist. 
but in this case, we're destroying after we do the check. So these will just all be equal to no one and the rest of our code won't uh, run. So now we're gonna do uh, a for loop for i equals zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. And there's semicolons between all these if you haven't used a for loop. Uh, for loop is basically going to start at index zero. It's gonna run the code here. Um, well, it's gonna check if this is true, then it's gonna run the code inside of itself. Then uh, i is gonna be incremented, so now it'll be equal to one. It's gonna do this check again, run the code, do this check again, run the code, until this check fails, and then we go on to the rest of the code. So let's do um, if our inst i is equal to, is not equal to no one. So if it's not equal to no one, that means it's equal to a ground object or a ground instance ID. Then we do with that instance, Then we're going to trigger an alarm one because if we run uh, that instance, if we run the auto tile for that instance now, right now, this instance hasn't been destroyed yet, so nothing is going to change. So we're going to set an alarm to one or actually two. Let's not set to one. You have to give it a step uh, to for this instance to be able to be destroyed. So set our alarm, actually alarm zero, not alarm one, to two. And that's it for this code. I'll give you time to pause, three, two, one. And now we're gonna create an alarm event, alarm zero. And in alarm zero, we're just gonna run SCR auto tile. We're gonna run our script. And that should be it. And we run the game now. And you should see when we click the object, it'll be destroyed and the uh, instances around it will be updated. There you go. It's not instant, uh, there's ways to do it instantly, um, but for simplification, I showed you how to use the alarm so that it deletes and still works pretty quick. Uh, remember, our room speed is only on 30. If we increased it to 60, it would happen twice as fast as this, so it looks smoother. And again, you can now you know how to do the checks for the Booleans and then program it to select a certain image index to pick depending on what's around it. So you could have uh, objects for this case where there's not anything above it or below it, but there is to the left and right. Uh, if you wanna get more advanced, you could check for diagonals by using X plus 32, uh, comma Y minus 32, or 32, if 32 is your grid size, then it would go up and over and check for an object being there. And yeah, so it's pretty cool. Uh, this is more useful for uh, legacy users on GameMaker. Uh, we have an auto tiling function. We can even do tile collisions now. And uh, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.